virus isoleerde. Hij gaf het de naam BX-virus. Hij bestudeerde het levende BX-virus onder zijn nieuwe microscoop. En alsof het allemaal nog niet genoeg was, ontwikkelde hij ook nog een manier om het levende virus te vernietigen. He was in an era when uh, radio was uh, once it was a lot of experimentation going with radios and uh, electrical waves of various types. And he thought of the idea of using radio waves to affect these organisms or to destroy them, if you will, in, uh, in a culture and in the body. And he began to work on that and finally succeeded. He succeeded in... What? He succeeded in using radio waves to destroy the microorganisms. He actually destroyed them. There is film footage that we have that shows him isolating a virus from a human breast tumor and tuning his uh, frequency instrument to the correct frequency and destroying the virus as viewed under the microscope. Destroying as in blowing it up, as in, as in, as in uh, uh, reducing the integrity of the cell walls of the microbe and having it literally blow up so it would it would come apart and cease to live that's what it that's what it mean by destroy this is the universal microscope uh, looking much smaller than the photos would have would imply. Um, here he is, uh, the man himself. Uh, In this upper left-hand corner is the huge 500 watt frequency instrument that cost him during the depression $7,500 to build, which was uh, a fortune back then. And above him is the beam tube. This here says the first pictures of cancer virus. And. Right here, now, now we can see it's very difficult to see, but these little specks that you see are cancer virus. <clears throat> we have an air bubble coming in from the right because he just didn't seal the cover glass. But all these little specks are c the cancer virus, which is actually the smallest virus that they have discovered. It's smaller than the polio virus or any of the viruses that they discovered. And of course, this is the only recorded view through the universal microscope. And uh, later he hits it with the, uh, the, the, the instrument, explodes the viruses, and then they look through it again so you can see the, the results. Can you really see no. it? Or? Well, it's, it's fairly clear to me. Okay, now you'll see him adjusting the frequency instrument. Is that the tube? You'll, you'll see a, a flash. You probably, it'll be difficult. This okay, the, it was yeah. just a tube. This, this is the tube. Two seconds of a flash, and, and, and that was Notice enough. how far away it is from the microscope. They say it, it deals with every... Volgens Reich heeft ieder micro-organisme een eigen golffrequentie... ...waarmee het heel specifiek vernietigd kan worden. Okay, and then here is, uh, th again through the universal, uh, the cancer, the BX virus, or the cancer virus, um, after uh, treatment. Now you can see it's just a... Uh, uh, collecting in clumps there and uh, it was just a brief picture but what it would do it was just pile up together in deathly unmoving clumps. This is showing the beam tube the lethal frequencies uh, that, that destroy the diseases. These are some of the first ever recorded uh, oscillograph uh, pictures ever shown. We'll just push it ahead here. There's several different uh, explosions on this tape. Okay. Let's get it ahead to another one here. But there we go, paramecium. They're hitting it with the frequencies right now, and it explodes. Was it done with the original Rife tube? Or? No, this wasn't done with the original Rife tube. This was done with the modified later version. Um, as you can see, they're using paramecium, which are you know the largest of microorganisms, so easily seen uh, with a standard microscope. Um, that may be why they chose this, but also. Um, you, you know, you're not going to be able to blow up viruses and, and observe them with an op optical microscope. So, <clears throat> it just graphically shows how the principles of how it worked. You're destroying the organism, and that way, eliminating its effects on the on the body or whatever else. But is it for you a proof that it works? Well, I mean, 
It's proof before your very eyes. If the thing explodes, I don't know how it could survive that. Maar Montgomery en Ringus zijn niet de enigen die gek zijn van Rife. Engeland, Londen. Stuart Andrews is elektrotechnisch ingenieur in Londen. Ook hij raakte bij toeval in contact met de verhalen over Rijf. I was involved with a lecture tour in Canada and I went to the wrong lecture. I had some time to kill, so I waited and listened to what was being said. And I became interested, both from a historical point of view and also from a scientific point of view. If you hear a Rife story for the first time, I must say, I was very skeptic. And so was I. There perhaps have been far too many von Daniken type people uh, involved with this in the past. There's always a temptation for people to believe rather than look under the surface and examine the facts. So I thought I'd do just that. I thought I'd rather debunk it. The problem was that the more I learnt, the more I discovered about the biology involved, the more I consulted with other cellular biologists, the more convinced I was that here was an element of science that had never, science that had never been investigated fully. Een van de vele documenten over Rife vermeldt dat er microscopen overgebracht waren naar Engeland, naar een zekere dokter Gunning. Andrews ging op zoek. In Canada kwamen Montgomery en Ringus ondertussen om in de papieren over Rife. Rife kreeg zeer veel wetenschappelijke belangstelling. Zijn probleem was echter dat hij zelf nauwelijks publiceerde. Toch kwamen onderzoekers bij hem langs en raakten ze bijzonder enthousiast over zijn nieuwe ideeën. Het lukte hem dan ook zijn therapie in een kliniek te testen. In 1934, once uh, Rife was uh, convinced that he had successfully destroyed the virus that he isolated from a human breast tumor, they, he went uh, he went on to do the same in rats, and after that, they set up in 1934 a clinic where they took 16 terminally ill patients, and within three months cured them all. And these were people that were on the verge of death. There was one, one uh, particular patient, his uh, abdomen was so wasted away that they could feel his spine through, through his stomach. So in, in curing patients like that, the, the word got out, but they tried to be conservative as, as good scientists are, as to saying what they were accomplishing. They didn't want the news to get out prematurely. And maybe that also contributed to, to its loss in, in not uh, uh, telling the story exactly the way it happened. In our skepticism, what we had to do to prove this to ourselves, whether it was true or not, is we had to come down to this uh, science library and dig out the material for ourselves. And in the scientific journals that exist in any good science library in, in anywhere in the world are to be found the original Rife documentation of his microscope and the work they were doing there. Now, what's important about that is the science journals of 60 years old cannot be falsified the way a film or a photograph can be. So finding the material here in the library and in other libraries in other parts of the world, the, the proof is there. Some people call the story of Rife a myth, but here we have some articles in uh, public journals. This is Science 1932. Uh, observations of the uh, with the rife microscope of filter passing forms of microorganisms science did several articles on these uh, here's another uh, this one has a uh, summary of uh, 
some advances in the sciences during 1931. Here it says the completion of what is probably the world's most powerful microscope, capable of magnifications up to 17,000 diameters, was announced by Dr. Well Raymond Reif of San Diego. Well, here also in California in Western Medicine, December 1931, we have a picture of Reif himself with the microscope, and they published an article together with Arthur Isaac Kendall uh, with the experiments that they did. This is an article by his hand. This was written by Royal Reif and Dr. Kendall, and also in the Smithsonian Institute, an article published uh, on the new microscopes, giving a full explanation of the universal microscope and uh, the experiments that they conducted. And as far as the cure goes, it says, under the microscope, disease organisms uh, such as those of tuberculosis, cancer, sarcoma, streptococcus, typhoid, staphylococcus, leprosy, hoof and mouth disease, and others may be observed to succumb when exposed to certain lethal frequencies. So this is one of the only mentions of the cure that we have in uh, an official journal, but here we have it. In and they were actually doing research they with were doing frequencies, re radio abso frequencies. Absolutely. It says that these, uh, the, the frequencies coordinated with the particular frequencies peculiar to each individual organisms and directed upon them by rays covering a wide range of waves. So they were experimenting with these things and they must have had success or else their falsehood would have been exposed. Are there any photographs of the organisms made? Yeah, we have uh, here at uh, beginning with uh, a few cells of chlorophyll at 17,000 magnification showing these things which uh, had never been seen up to then. Then we have the magnifications of some tetanus spores at 25,000 diameters which today cannot be achieved with an optical microscope, and that's what the universal microscope and all of Reif's microscopes were. Unfortunately, they've been lost. So here you have this incredible microscope, an incredible cure. Where is it? Well, I think it uh, was a victim of its revolutionary nature. We had a completely new approach that uh, many people could not understand the principles involved. And few, if any, people were capable of reproducing the effects because they, didn't, they lacked the facilities. And uh, because of that, I think uh, it, w it didn't take off the way it, it should have because of the time and the depression that the money was scarce for, fu for research and it could not be verified by other scientists around the world. De ideeën van Rife zijn nooit in wetenschappelijke publicaties weerlegd. Waren zijn ideeën te ingewikkeld of te revolutionair? In ieder geval had Rife geen geluk. In 1936 raakte hij verwikkeld in een rechtszaak over de patenten op zijn uitvindingen. Hij won, maar het kostte hem al zijn geld en gedesillusioneerd moest Rife zijn spullen verkopen. Ik denk dat Rife was, a, was aggressief, um, even als hij was uh, greedy, dan zijn dingen misschien compleet anders nu, want hij zou meer forceful in zijn uh, uh, publicatie van dit. Hij uh, was timid, hij was schaai, hij was onassuming, hij was eigenlijk een cons consummate scientist. Hij was wat een scientist moet zijn. Hij was niet out there promoting zichzelf, hij was werken aan zijn werk. And and uh, so if he if he had been more vocal about it, I think more people would have known about it. More people would have understood it. The story would have lasted longer, probably right up to the day. Um, really, the reason it died was because nobody took the reins. Somewhere, somehow, there there are the microscope does exist. We have recent pictures of it, so somebody does have it. There are five microscopes, Rife microscopes on planet Earth, unless somebody's melted them down. Well, in fact, two microscopes were shipped to England. The first one was in 1938. That microscope was returned to the United States in 1956. And a further microscope, the number five microscope, was given to Dr. Gonin in the UK. Now, he died the following year, and due to a piece of luck, his will stipulated 
that all his scientific instruments must be preserved.